talk about our glomerular filtration weight based upon that understanding of filtration. So our glomerular filtration weight is basically how much plasma is filtered across that glomerular filtration membrane per minute. Um, and that is about 125 milliliters per minute or 180 liters per day. We can also speak about a different uh, weight or a different flow, which is our renal plasma flow. So our renal plasma flow is the total amount of blood that is coming into the nephron, that's coming into the kidneys essentially. And that is basically 625 milliliters per minute, but understand that not all of that is filtered. So we've got 625 uh, milliliters coming into our afferent arterial. 125 of that is filtered across the filtration membrane, and then 500 milliliters is going to exit our efferent arterial. So from that understanding, we can then speak about our filtration fraction, okay? Um, and I'll talk about how we calculate filtration fraction and what that value means, but we wanna compare that first to what our systemic capillaries look like. In our systemic capillaries, we had a net filtration pressure of two millimeters of mercury and a filtration rate of about three liters per day. If we remember the starving forces um, back in the cardiovascular system when we calculated that out, we had a net movement of three liters per fluid from our capillaries into our interstitial fluid per day. And if we compare what's happening in the kidneys, we can see that this is exponentially much larger, much more fluid much more plasma is being filtered in the kidneys than what we saw in these systemic capillaries, okay? And that really speaks to the efficiency of the kidneys and it speaks to um, how, how wondrous the kidneys are, right? If you think about a dialysis machine, these really large machines, and if any of you have ever been exposed to a work with a dialysis machine, um, you hook that patient up and they filter all their blood, well, most of their blood out of the body, through that machine and to realize that our kidneys, which can pretty much fit in one palm of my hand, right in the palm of my hand, um, can carry out that level of filtration per minute is really, really awesome. Right? It speaks to the intelligence and the efficiency of the kidneys and, and the human body. Um, okay, so let's look at filtration fraction more specifically. So a filtration fraction is a measure of how much of that GFR when uh, as, a, as a measure, as a fraction of our total renal plasma flow. So we know that 625 milliliters of plasma comes into the glomerulus and 125 milliliters is filtered. So how much of our total renal plasma flow is filtered across the filtration membrane? That's what our filtration fraction tells us. So if we take that 125, and we divide it by 625, which is all of the blood coming into the kidneys, we get a, a, a percentage of about 20. So 20% of our total renal plasma flow is filtered across the filtration membrane per minute, okay? Um, and so that is telling us that not all of the blood that comes into the kidneys is actually filtered, only about 20% is filtered. This number also has a lot of clinical importance too. So it's telling us how efficient the kidneys are at filtering our blood, how efficient the kidneys are at filtering out toxins and waste products from the blood. And so we like to see this number at 20, but as we get older and as the kidneys uh, decrease in their function, this number in actuality goes down, okay? It goes down to about 18 and 16 and it gradually drops as our kidneys lose function as a natural part of the aging process. Okay, so this value, the filtration fraction, has a lot of um, importance clinically as well. Okay, so we can also talk about our filtration load. So the filtration load is specific to a molecule, any molecule that is freely filtered. And so any small molecule that can move across the filtration membrane, meaning that the membrane must be permeable to this molecule. Examples are gonna be amino acids, glucose, or ions, sodium, potassium. Um, we can calculate the filtered load for each of those molecules. And we sim simply look at how much our 
how much uh, this molecule is present in our plasma multiplied by the GFR, basically 125 milliliters per minute. And this is basically how much of this molecule is being filtered. And so we can look at uh, an example of glucose. We can talk about the filtered load for glucose specifically. And we can calculate that by looking at our GFR, which we know to be 125 milliliters per minute, and our plasma glucose concentration, which in a healthy adult should be about 100 milligrams per deciliter. And if we convert that to milligrams per milliliter, that's one milligram per milliliter. And so our filtered load is the product of our GFR, so 125, and our plasma concentration of glucose, so one milligram, which is 125 milligrams per minute. So I can ask you to, cal to uh, calculate the filter load of any molecule, X molecule, as long as I give you the plasma concentration of X molecule. If I told you that, let's say the plasma concentration of um, amino acids was two milligrams per milliliter, you would simply multiply your GFR by your plasma concentration of X molecule, and that'll give you the filtered load of that specific molecule. And what that number tells us is how much of that molecule is being filtered across the filtration membrane. Okay. Um, now let's move on to speak about the regulation of GFR. So uh, GFR is very highly, very heavily regulated. And when we talk about regulation, we should instantly be thinking about things like intrinsic mechanism and extrinsic mechanisms that we saw with the cardiovascular system. So there are different forces or different influences or factors that are trying, excuse me, trying to keep GFR at a stable, I'm sorry, at a stable amount, at a stable weight. Um, and if we look at this, uh, this uh, initial uh, recording here, so 100 liters of fluid per day, that's how much is filtered, and that is a product of looking at 125 liters per minute. Only about 1.5 liters of urine is excreted per day. We don't, we don't excrete 180 liters of urine per day. That would be excessive. That would be dangerous, right? That would put us at a, um, a dangerously dehydrated state that would throw off our blood volume, throw off our blood pressure, that would throw off homeostasis. 99% of the amount of plasma that is filtered is actually reabsorbed. And I'll go back to this slide to kind of reiterate that. So we filter 180 liters across this filtration membrane. And if you remember last time I talked about the fine tuning of that urine. So we reabsorb things that we need, and a lot of that is water. 99% of the fluid that's filtered out is reabsorbed of water. Otherwise, we would be um, extremely dehydrated. We would be extremely um, uh, hypoxic, right? We'd lose a lot of our blood volume, lose a lot of the vascularization to our important tissues. So most of that fluid is reabsorbed and only about 1% of that fluid is actually excreted as urine. So this is a really intelligent way that the kidneys can take our entire blood volume, filter about 20% of it, remember only 20% of what's coming into the kidneys is filtered, get all of that uh, plasma filtered across the filtration membrane, and then really concentrate that urine so that only what we do not want is excreted. So we're really concentrating that urine, taking back most of that valuable water and other important substances so that we're really excreting absolutely what we do not want, what's absolutely um, uh, not needed from the body that is excreted as waste, as urine, okay? Um, now, small increases in our GFR lead to large increases in volume and fluid filtered. We know this, right? If we're increasing our GFR, we are essentially increasing how much fluid is filtered across that filtration membrane. And so more volume will be filtered and more urine will be produced. This is why if you drink a lot of water, if you take in a lot of fluids, you increase your GFR, 
more fluid is filtered across and you essentially are going to excrete more liquid, excrete more urine, right? Um, but within that, having said that, GFR is very heavily regulated. So GFR is not a directly, is, there's not a directly proportional relationship between GFR and blood pressure because of that tight regulation that happens with GFR. And we're going to move on to speak about intrinsic mechanism of regulation and extrinsic mechanisms of regulating our GFR. So this graph is kind of depicting that to us, right? It's showing us our glomerular filtration rate on the x-axis here, on the y-axis here, and our mean arterial pressure here on the x. And we can see that as mean arterial pressure increases, our GFR increases, but there's a very uh, uh, large window from 80 millimeters of mercury to 180 millimeters of mercury where GFR stays the exact same. So outside of this window, we can see steep changes in our GFR, but within this very heavily regulated window, 80 to 180, our GFR remains the same at 125. And so what this tells us is that the kidneys can withstand changes in mean arterial pressure. And if we remind ourselves what mean arterial pressure really means, this is just our blood pressure, our perfusion pressure, right? The amount of pressure that's moving through our vascular system. And so if we drop that pressure, our kidneys can withstand that drop to a certain degree. But if we rise that pressure, our kidneys can also withstand that rise to a certain degree. Outside of that window, the GFR will either drop or rise um, in order to make up for that. But between 80 to 180, our kidneys are really working to keep our GFR at a stable constant level of 125 milliliters per minute. Okay. And this is done mostly through intrinsic mechanisms. So make a note, make a, a, a note in your slides or in your notes that this heavily regulated window between 180 and 80 happens because of intrinsic mechanisms of regulation specifically. Okay, and we'll talk about some extrinsic mechanisms later on. Okay, so there are three main intrinsic mechanisms for regulating GFR. There's myogenic regulation, there's tubular glomerular feedback, and there's the mesangial cell contraction. And I want to sort of compare these three mechanisms. Is that a question? Yeah, can you repeat what you said about the, um, the heavily regulated window in the graph? Yep, yeah, sure. So here we talked about um, our mean arterial pressure of 80 to a mean arterial pressure of 180, our kidneys are gonna work really hard through the mechanisms that I'm gonna go into right now. Our kidneys are gonna work really hard through these intrinsic mechanisms to keep the GFR at 125. So this is that window of regulation. If our mean arterial pressure stays between 80 and 180, our GFR should not change. If our mean arterial pressure drops below 80, then our GFR is going to take a dip. It's going to take a plunge because we can no longer regulate outside of this window. Okay, I hope that made sense. What was the, um, it, was, it was regulated intrinsically or extrinsically? Only intrinsically. Good question. So that's a good point. So I was making that um, distinction. So this is only um, this window of regulation between 80 to 180 only happens via the intrinsic mechanisms, the three that I'm going to talk about on the next slide. Okay. 